Okay, so I've got this layer cut out. Notice I don't have the bottom refined because something's going to overlap that. So now I go to the next layer going into the foreground. Now this one's going to be a little trickier, but I, I notice the edge I want cut out. I want this sky cut out. But first, I'm going to do as much as I can with the techniques I already know. So first I'm going to play with transforming it a little bit. Like I don't like these branches being really long. So I'm going to warp it just slightly so that those branches aren't quite so extreme, right? But at the same time, I don't want to warp it so much the trees don't look believable. And because I use 10 megapixels or bigger, that should give me the, le the, the license and kind of forgiveness I need to work with these elements, even though I'm making some parts of them bigger, some parts smaller. So let's say I make it like that. And that's subtle, but it, it could make all the difference in my composition from this to this, right? So don't forget transforming. Now I'm gonna use my magic wand. I'm gonna select all the blues, hold down shift. But notice there isn't a lot of blue in this photo reference except for in the sky. So I could try unchecking contiguous, which means it will select the blues everywhere in that layer and see what it gives me. And then I can add to that selection. And it doesn't look like it's selecting within the trees or in the grass. So, so far, so good. Then I can even try to add in the, the mist, but no, that's, that's a problem, this kind of dust cloud. So I'm going to Command Z that. Then I'm going to refine the edge to soften it a little bit. It will remember my settings if I have it checked to remember my settings. And you'll see in the preview, this is now what it's going to delete. Then I say OK. And it feathers my edge just slightly. And it expands it just slightly so it will get rid of those little halos that you get. And that will save me a ton of time with the eraser tool later. So let's look at that. Let's look at the edges of this tree. Again, it's easier with organic stuff. And hit delete. Hit delete a few more times, and you see how that looks. All right. That's pretty good. Now I can keep that up with the blues inside the tree. Using magic wand without contiguous, refine the edge, and then delete it out. <laughs> that didn't do a whole lot. Let's go back and just delete without refining the edge. Then let's refine the edge and see if it leaves me anything. Yeah, it looks like it leaves me quite a bit. There we go. But it's all softened. You see how much that helps? Now all those really complex shapes in the trees, now they're easier to make overlap. And it worked for everything except that was blue. So now I got to worry about this mist. Now this mist is a little different. I'm going to turn on contiguous again, but I'm going to make my tolerance a lot bigger. I'm going to make it 80 instead of 32. And now I'm going to click on these, these brown kind of clouds of dust. Now this is different. I'm not going to hit delete. I'm going to use a new tool. It's a long time coming. It's underneath the history brush tool. It's above the gradient tool. It's the eraser. Now we only use the eraser when we actually want to erase in a particular way. Otherwise, we just delete. If we just want to get rid of pixels, we delete. That's very predictable. The eraser is a brush. And I'm going to use my tablet. This is the most important use of your tablet today. And I'm going to choose one of these two dots in the middle of the top of the brush selections. These are pressure sensitive to size. I'm going to make it pretty big. For our resolution, I'm going to make it around 300, 350, 400 pixels wide. Then I'm going to change its hardness. I'm going to change its hardness to about 20, which is really quite soft. Right? Now when I erase, notice that the harder I press, the more it will remove. And the lighter I press, the softer the edge will be because I have a soft edged eraser. 
But notice, I'm only erasing the selection. So I'm not erasing the tree. I'm erasing the, the brown cloudy dust around the tree. Okay. Then the other thing you can do with the eraser is you can change its opacity. So once I've knocked back the hard edges of this dust, because that's really the only problem with it is those hard edges. You know, dust clouds are kind of cool. They'll add authenticity to what I'm doing. But now I can actually take the opacity of my eraser down to like 60. And it will leave a little bit of that dust each time. Take it down even more. And now I'm starting to transition, blend in layers together. So you see a little bit of those ruins coming through the dust cloud. Are you not entertained? All right. So then you hit Command D, right? And the reason I had that selection is because I didn't want to accidentally erase my tree, which I need to be nice and sharp. So now, even though the lighting and the color still don't match, I have three layers here, and they're setting in space pretty well just by being cut out. And then I have that dust cloud up here. Oh, no, I don't have a dust cloud. That's just the background there. So we'll fix that with lighting. Okay, so now let's bring in another layer. What do we have left? Let's see. Working from the background to the foreground. Okay, now I've got this house, right? Again, there's lots of blue. Let's try having contiguous turned off. But I have to be on the right layer. Ah, happens a lot. And I can see, okay, where is it selecting blues that I don't want it to select? Because I'm still at 80 tolerance. If it's selecting too much, I can take it back down to 32 and try it again. That's pretty good, but maybe I want it a little bit higher. Let's try it about 60. Yeah, that looks good. That's getting all the little holes. But then I want to use the lasso and hold down Option because this is actually blue paint on the house. And I don't want that to get deleted. So I make sure all those little selections are, are uh, subtracted from it. I can add that in. There's this weird little branch. I can hold down shift and add these branches in. I, want, I don't want those to be in my image. Okay, good. Now I'm going to hit delete and it's going to remove all the pixels, but it's also going to leave a little halo because I haven't refined the edge yet. But I want to see how bad that halo is. And notice it's not too bad. It's just a slight purplish hue. And the reason the halo isn't as bad as when I did it back here is because I used a higher tolerance. I use 60 instead of 32. And so it cut more deeply into it. Okay? It just depends. The, the closer you get to the foreground, the sharper you want your selections to be. So now I can use the eraser. And instead of getting an exact cutout, like I know I don't want these buildings, instead of trying to get everything perfect with my lasso, unless it's something really obvious I don't want, like that building, now I'm just going to take off the hard edges. So I'm going to use my eraser. I'm going to use it pretty big, but at an opacity of 100%. And just lightly touch to soften out those hard edges. But I want kind of the debris sticking up. I want some of these branches roughly sticking up. And this is blending. This is transitioning between elements. Focal points have to be cut out cleanly, but all this kind of transitional stuff, it's not as, as vital. Now this stuff is off of my frames. So I don't need to worry about it. Right? That's why we have the guide there. Now I'm also going to, to soften these hard edges because I have driftwood coming on top of it. So I'm just going to knock off with my soft-edged eraser some of those hard edges. Okay, now before I go too much further, I'm gonna hit Command, or I'm gonna say File Save and Save As. And I wanna save this as Carl Assignment 1. 
And this is no longer my sketch. This is my, my assignment. So for digital art. Yeah, so since you brought in a sketch, since you opened your screenshot sketch, you want to replace that screenshot name with your name and assignment one and digital art and FA17. And you want to save it to the desktop. So command D to navigate there. And now that one Photoshop file will take a little while to save because this is a lot of resolution. A lot of information, especially with this extra space around it. Save it to the desktop. Then you can check it. That will contain all of the assets you need. So you really don't need your reference layers anymore. You just need to work with this one Photoshop file. Now let's see, I have one, two, three, four layers so far. I need one more to have five and meet the requirements. And I could use this driftwood, or I could use this bent tree, and that bent tree is just not as good a photo as the others. So I'm going to make the executive decision. Your sketch intentions can change as you're working. And I'm going to instead try to use this driftwood on this side. So what can I do? I can transform it to be on the right layer. I can flip it horizontally. I can scale it and stretch it until it's basically what I need it to be. And now, I'm going to use all those techniques we've talked about. First, I'm going to use contiguous magic wand with a, um, a tolerance of 60, because I'm pretty confident, oh, but that doesn't work there, of this blue. Then I'm going to use it with a tolerance of 32, which is the default. But I need, maybe even need to go a little bit less, 20, because that, that would, actually, I don't even need that wood. What am I worried about? So you, you work smart, right? I don't want any of this or most of this because I want that house to show. So it's about what overlaps and what you cut away. You know, I kind of really like the driftwood, though. So let's see. What if I do let it show? Kind of push it near the bottom more. And obviously I don't want this kind of rock here. I don't really want this here. All, all my availability is on the schedule on the door, but on Friday I have campus meetings. So for instance, I know I have a campus meeting at 2, so I just ask you to email me when you want to be able to come in on Friday and I'll tell you my availability. But generally I try to have office hours 9 to 4 on Fridays. It's just that campus meetings can get in the way. That means you have to rasterize it before you can delete from it. Do you remember that from the cartoon jumble? So you right click on the layer where the title is and you rasterize. It's a way of protecting the smart objects. So once you save that, that, that Photoshop image, that PSD image, you just um, you plug in your thumb drive to the computer and you just drag and drop that file onto it. Well, that's all there is to it. All right. So I am now cutting away. Yeah, this is this is sizing up pretty well. Okay. So now I have 